For years, the Falcon Heavy was the world's most powerful operational rocket, operational rocket. But in November, NASA's new moon rocket, the SLS, stole that title with its inaugural launch. Regardless, with each launch, the Falcon Heavy rocket puts on a dramatic show back on Earth. And on Sunday, SpaceX's fifth Falcon Heavy, the towering launch vehicle known for its boosters, aerial acrobatics, and synchronized landings when returning to Earth, took to the skies, producing one of the massive commercial rocket's most spectacular launches yet. Powered by three Falcon 9-derived boosters, each with nine Merlin 1D engines, Falcon Heavy fired up and soared off of SpaceX's Kennedy Space Center LC-39A pad at the start of its Sunday launch window. Producing up to 2,326 tons of thrust shortly after liftoff, Falcon Heavy upheld its position as the world's most powerful commercial rocket and the second most powerful operational rocket. That being said, USS F-67 largely mirrored SpaceX's November 1st, 2022 USS F-44 Falcon Heavy launch, and even used the same side boosters. Flying for the second time in 75 days, B-1064 and B-1065 aced their roles in the mission and separated from Falcon Heavy's expendable sensor booster, or core, around three minutes after liftoff. The side boosters immediately flipped around with thrusters powered by compressed nitrogen gas and ignited three of their nine Merlin 1D engines to boost back to the Florida coast. After coasting back to Florida, they completed brief re-entry burns to lessen atmospheric heating and fired up one last time to gently touch down at SpaceX's LZ-1 and LZ-2 landing pads. This is quite the epic shot, and SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk even likened it to how we will land on Mars. Six and a half hours later, the U.S. Space Systems Command confirmed that Falcon Heavy had again completed the exceptionally difficult launch without issue. To deliver the USS F-67 mission's payload directly to geosynchronous orbit, the giant SpaceX rocket had to sacrifice one of its potentially reusable boosters and complete a complex six-hour ballet of rolls, burns, and spacecraft deployments. And for the second time in a row, Falcon Heavy did so without apparent issue. In an SSC press release, Major General Stephen Purdy, Program Executive Officer for Assured Access to Space, said that the group had other another fantastic launch today on a Falcon Heavy. He added that while the launch itself was impressive, he was most proud of the fact that we placed important national capabilities into space. Either way, it was still an impressive launch. USS F-67 was Falcon Heavy's first twilight launch. The extraordinary cadence of SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket, which Falcon Heavy is derived from, caused twilight launches and the incredible light shows that they can produce to become a fairly routine phenomena. But just under five years after its February 2018 debut, there had still never been a Falcon Heavy launched Jellyfish, or Nebula. That thankfully changed on Sunday. The rocket lifted off just 10 or so minutes after sunset and soared into the fading purple skies. Those skies were still relatively bright at ground level, reducing the amount of contrast, but the resulting light show was still spectacular as Falcon Heavy and its immense exhaust plume ascended back into the sunlight. The artificial sunrise lit up that pillar-like plume with the colors of dawn and eventually bright daylight. Close-up views enabled by tracking telescopes captured the true drama, which began shortly after Falcon Heavy's twin side boosters separated from the rocket's main core stage and upper stage, flipped around and ignited their engines to fly back to the Florida coast they'd only just lifted off from. As the nine engine center core continued towards space, each booster fired up one and then three Merlin 1D engines for their boost back burns. Elon Musk himself shared this amazing picture and said, Falcon Heavy Ascends. A view from Astronomy Live captured the moment of boost back burn ignition, during which the side boosters visibly blasted craters into the Falcon Heavy center core's much more powerful plume. As those plumes interacted, the fluid dynamics and light produced by multiple Merlin 1D engines combined to create chaotic wisps of orange red, and yellow, akin to an exploding nebula. The moments prior were also spectacular as the two side boosters lit up by direct sunlight against the nearly black sky began gently floating away from the center core and spinning around with bursts from several nitrogen gas thrusters a brief moment of serenity before the violence of engine ignition. A truly remarkable footage.
And of course, huge thanks to Astronomy Live. Please don't forget to follow them on Twitter as well as YouTube in order to watch impressive videos like the one you just witnessed. But as Major General Purdy noted, the purpose of USS F-67, spectacle aside, was to carry a number of important payloads into orbit. After both side boosters touched down, SpaceX ended its live coverage at the request of the Space Force, reiterating the mission's secretive customer and nature. The USSF hasn't confirmed much about the USS F-67 mission's payloads, but Falcon Heavy is known to be carrying a geostationary communications relay satellite called CBAS-2 and is likely built by Boeing. CBAS-2 is joined by Northrop Grumman's third long-duration propulsive EELV or LDPE-3A, a combination of a propulsive kickstage and a satellite. LDPE-3A is carrying a collection of rideshare satellites and payloads and is designed to operate for months in orbit. Using USS F-44 as a guide, the total USS F-67 payload could weigh roughly 3.75 to 4.75 tons. The same SSC press release provides more detail, noting that LDPE-3A carries two hosted payloads, Catcher and Wasat. Catcher is a space weather instrument developed by the Aerospace Corporation, while Wasat is a prototype of a wide-angle observation instrument designed to track other satellites in GSO. LDPE is also hosting three payloads developed by the Space Rapid Capabilities Office, including two operational prototypes for enhanced situational awareness, and an operational prototype crypto slash interface encryption payload providing secure space to ground communications capability. For Falcon Heavy side boosters B1064 and B1065, both of which supported missions 44 and 67, their missions are far from over. Their second successful side by side landings have cleared the boosters to be reused on a third U.S. military launch called USSF-52. Originally known as AFSPC-52, the mission was Falcon Heavy's first operational U.S. military launch contract and the first time the rocket beats competitor United Launch Alliance during a competitive procurement. Next, Spaceflight reports that USSF-52 is scheduled to launch no earlier than April 10th of 2023, less than three months from now. Once that mission is complete, Falcon Heavy will have have no more U.S. military missions on contract, although more will almost certainly be rewarded sooner than later. 52 is sandwiched between two other Falcon Heavy launches. Next, Spaceflight also reports that Falcon Heavy could launch the Viasat-3 communications satellite as early as March of 2023, and the Jupiter-3 or Echo Star-24 communications satellite as early as May of 2023 making for a busy 90 days. For that trio to happen as scheduled, SpaceX will have to beat Falcon Heavy's record of 75 days for a turnaround, which has coincidentally occurred twice, first between Arabsat-6A and STP-2, and again between USSF-44 and 67. Including 67, SpaceX has up to five Falcon Heavy launches scheduled this year. And as a quick note, although NASA's SLS dethroned the Falcon Heavy as the most powerful rocket flying today, SpaceX could wrest the rocket power title back from NASA soon, as the company is gearing up for the first orbital flight test of its giant Starship Mars-bound rocket, which will use 33 Raptor engines to roar off the pad with a mind-blowing 17 million pounds of thrust which is more than any rocket that's ever been built will ever have. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and as always, if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, we thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again next time.